Praise the Lord and welcome to the Old Path Bible Study. I'm Pastor Curtis Hutchinson here in my office at Crossway Church in Queen City, Texas. Glad to have you with us gathered around God's Word. Let's get our Bibles and get ready to get into Hebrews chapter 12. This will be part 26 today of this 12th chapter. God has been so good to us to show us the wonderful really the light of his truths found in the word of God for those who seek his righteousness, those who hunger and thirst after his righteousness learn very quickly. The Bible says all God's words are in righteousness. So anybody who's hungry and thirsty after, after going after God's righteousness they're all caught up in God's Word. They're all wrapped around God's Word. God's Word is all wrapped around them. The Bible says under the New Covenant that God puts His, his laws, His words into our hearts and writes them into our minds. So it's all about the Word. You can't live by faith if, if you're not hearing the Word because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. But you have to understand here in this this last few moments of this church age, the deception and the seduction is at the greatest level it has ever been. And we, for the most part, the church has left sound doctrine. So we, we, we stopped learning years ago what sound, what makes the scripture sound, which is that form of doctrine that saved us. If, if all scripture is not tied to and in the context of that form of doctrine, that saved us, it will not be sound. And that's, I'm, I'm thankful to be a part of this last day's remnant who is coming back to sound doctrine, coming back to the place they can hear and receive of the Lord, which is an exclusive faith in the cross, the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what the Bible teaches us. And and so, so many people, they, they can't refute the scriptures that are presented through ministries like ours, ours and others today, but, but they have just been brought to a place where they just refuse it. They just want to stay in their feel good, their, 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 their guess and make believe. So you have, you have to have scripture in your heart to be living by faith. faith. We walk by faith, but faith only comes, listen carefully, by hearing God's word. But it must be beyond these. We must be believing with the heart unto the righteousness of God's words. All God's words are in righteousness, Proverbs 8 and 8. And anyone who holds God's words, which are truth, in an unrighteous context... He is resisting all that ungodliness and unrighteousness that can only be produced as religion. If we hold the truth, that's Romans 1 and 18. If we hold the truth in an unrighteous context, meaning outside of the context of Jesus, who is our righteousness, and what he did in death to become our righteousness, to, to make God's word a lamp to our feet and a righteous path for our feet to, to walk upon, then God is resi he's resisting everything. He's resisting everything we try to do with the word of God. That is not what he's doing through an exclusive faith in the death of Jesus. And let me say something about that before we dig in today. The Lord is showing me this, and, and, I, and I pray you'd grab a hold of it. Faith that we live by is something that is deliberate. It is something that is conscious. It's not something that's in the subconscious of our minds and just going on without us. How could that be possible if we're supposed to bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ? How could that be possible if we're to all be of one mind, one spirit? Uh, there's only one faith, one Lord. Uh, uh, we must come back to sound doctrine. The only thing that makes all doctrine sound is that form of doctrine that freed us from sin and instantly at the same time made us servants of righteousness. Hallelujah. So I have to say these things all the time because of the 
end of the age that we are in. The church doesn't know it. Really, most of them don't want to know it, but there is a remnant who God is uh, uh, going to wake up unto righteousness. Amen. God is waking up now his church unto righteousness righteousness. If you're waking up to anything else, it's really not God. God wakes his people up to his righteousness. So I hope you're getting in on the move of God because it is the only move of God that's taking place, my friend. Wherever the cross of Christ is preached, wherever that is, there's the move of God. Wherever it's left out, it's a move of men. It's a move of the flesh. I don't care. Listen, I don't care how spiritual it may seem. I don't care what they say they're imparting to you or what they say that you're rece- You're not receiving anything outside of a tangible, conscious faith in the death of the Lord Jesus Christ and your union with him in that death. You were crucified with him. You must know that. Hebrews chapter 12. Let's start in verse 24 today. And don't forget that uh, this this Facebook page that we're live on, the Crossway Church, Queen City, Texas Facebook page, or if you're watching on the YouTube channel later, which is Curtis Hutchinson 316, you can, both of the, the, the these teaching sessions and the worship services uh, will always end up on that YouTube channel, Curtis Hutchinson 316. We also got our new church app, so it's The Crossway Church, Crossway being one word, the Crossway Church. It's the new app. You can donate there. You can watch the services there. You can even watch the services live through the app. So avail yourself. Get that on your smartphone so so you can uh, know when we're live. Be alerted. You follow along with us. And and uh, I just praise the Lord to be gathered around His Word today. Uh, Hebrews chapter twelve, verse twenty four. Let's start here. Let's read all the way through verse twenty nine. And then let's go back and see what the Lord is saying to us today. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. And to Jesus, speaking of who we've come to, the mediator of the new covenant, (coughs) and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel, see that you refuse not him that speaks. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifies the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we, receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, and that means shaken, let us have grace. That means let us live by grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, because our God is a consuming fire. Now, before we dig into this, and if you're listening to me and you've been going through your Christian life with the attitude that under grace, it's, it, it's better, you're right, but if you've been going through your Christian experience thinking or with the mindset that less is required of you under grace than was required them under law, you're wrong. Luke, write it down, please. Luke 12, 48 lets us know that to whom much is given, much is required. And God has given nobody any more than he has when he gave his son on the cross He gave all. He gave all through his son. Whoever has Christ has all things that are from God. Now, whether we're experiencing them, uh, using the, the things that we have in Christ, whether we know how or not, it's irrelevant. We have them. But the thing is, you better quickly find out how to experience what you have. 
because you're only going to have in heaven the fruit of what you allowed him to do through you here. So you have a place, a position there with Christ in Christ at the right hand of the Father even now. But even now you have a condition here and he, your heavenly Father is looking for fruit. Read John 15, looking for fruit. And you don't want to be caught in an unfruitful place. I promise you that. So look at this now. We've come to Jesus. Let's go through this. Let's go through this because... <clears throat> Much more is required of us under the new covenant. Much more is required of us because we've been given much more. We, we say, you know, we're under a better covenant because it's established on better promises and man, is that more right than we know? But hear me, there's something that goes along with that. Much requirement. You're required to love and to be merciful and to be gracious. You're, you're required to carry the gospel and to deliver the gospel, not just carry it around. You're, you, you're required to deliver it, to tell people that, that they can go to heaven. They don't have to go to hell. And, and Listen, you're called to carry the gospel and to deliver the gospel. Hallelujah. It took not only to the lost, but to the church because there's no other avenue they're going to find power other than sitting and listening on the message of the cross. And their faith has to learn to be placed in Christ and his death, their union with him there, so that they can experience the new covenant, especially scriptures that, that John wrote, 1 John 5, 18, that, that says that he keeps himself. He who's born of God sins not. That's talking about the new man in Christ Jesus. And he keeps himself. And, and, and the evil one can't touch him, can't visit him is what it says. Won't be, and that means that we're to keep ourselves in the faith. That means touching from our hearts righteousness, just like we did the first moment we were saved. We're to keep our faith in the cross, the death, our union in the death with the death of Christ. And the evil one won't even, and the word visit there in 1 John 5, 18 means he won't be able to attach anything to us. And the devil's always trying to attach a lie or to attach something. He wants to attach something to make your, it harder to run that race. But the Bible promises if you keep yourself, and that means in the faith, that means believing in your union with Christ in his death, that you don't let any other thing come along and move the object of your faith from the death of Jesus. Because if it does, you're going to find yourself, even though you might be seduced and deceived and don't even know it, and 90% or higher the church is. But if your faith is not literally, consciously, deliberately in your union with death, the death of Jesus, you died with him. That's your only hiding place. That, that's the only place you can get grace for anything. That's the only place God's uh, 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 prescribed, offered, open the door. You were, Romans 6, 3, immersed, placed, baptized into the death of Jesus. You're being made conformable unto the death of Jesus. Uh, come on now, Philippians 3, 10. You, 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 the Holy Spirit always delivers you to the death of Jesus. Why? So you can express, experience, and express the life of Christ. So watch, we've come to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, the blood of cleansing, the blood of Jesus that cleansed us, that speaks better things than that of Abel. Make no mistake about it, my friend. If you're not hearing the word of God in the context of righteousness, which is the context of Jesus, the righteous one, and the righteous work he carried out at Calvary, you're not hearing the word of God except in a fleshly carnal avenue. Listen, I've said it for 18 years, and now not, nobody's really ever said anything about it, but now they're starting, uh, certain individuals are starting to, to, to not like this, this comment uh, because they're moving away from a, a, a determined place of becoming more determined to know nothing else. That's what happens when you begin to move away. You begin to uh, make it vocal about what you don't like, uh, these people who are determined to preach nothing but the entirety of God's counsel in the light of Jesus Christ and him crucified. And that's this statement. There can be 10,000 sermons 
but the message in every sermon must be that of Christ and him crucified. And there are all sorts of uh, painted up pictures and phrases that the devil will put out there to make, to make you follow men who are following men. But if you ever fo start following a man like Paul who's following Christ, you, 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 if you know the Bible, you'll know who they are because they, they're, 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 they're preaching and teaching the word God committed unto them. We talked about it in the last session, the word of reconciliation, whether it be the lost or the church. Watch now. This, this is why the message of the cross, one of the main reasons the Lord has ushered it back into the church and churches have been raised up all over the world, little storefront churches, people meeting in their homes, little, listen, it don't, you ain't got to have everything all these places have, let me tell you. There's more of a danger of falling away. The, 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 the more people, I'm telling you, there's a great danger because it's a great danger. People start speaking into your lives or you think you got to do something to get money to keep all this going. You, you just need to stay the way of the cross, my friend. That allows God to add everything to your life you need. That's what Matthew 6, teaches us, that if we seek God's kingdom and his righteousness, which is the way of the cross first, and he'll add everything to our lives. So you, you've got to hear the word of God. You've got to study the word of God in the light of the one who is the light and what he did on Calvary's cross to be your applicable light. The word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. But Jesus said he's the light. So is he in his person, the light, yes. Is the written word of God, the light of God, yes. But the Bible says in Revelation 21 and 23 that the lamb is the light. Well, which one is it? Well, it's all three and you can't separate them. It's the word of God in the context of the person of the son of God and what he did as the lamb of God. When you move away from that, then as a minister, you're helping, you're, you're helping people move away from what the Holy Spirit is pointing to. And until, until folks get a hold of that, they'll continue to journey away. And let me say this, because there's a lot of uh, confusion right now uh, in the church, especially among those who are wondering about the message of the cross. I know it. I've heard it. I know it's right. And why, why, why is this going on? Why is that going on? Let me say this. When when, when, and you know, we, we, we get told all the time that we need, we just need to give people a chance. You need to, give, listen, everybody's got, got a chance. We had a chance. Everybody's got a chance. God gives everybody a thousand, a million chances day, day, day in, day out. But let me tell you something about folks who are preaching this message. Even if it's the first time after they've received the truth of Calvary, and they've agreed with God that it is right and it is the right direction, you will be able to tell they are going that direction. Whether they hem haw around and chew it up and mess it up pretty for the most part, but you'll always know where they're pointing. If they're not pointing there using the scriptures, well, they're just not pointing there using the scriptures. And so if they are, they are. So there's no condemnation whether they are or they're not. But they will be pointed out when they're not because it's dangerous, okay? It's dangerous. We, I mean, to, 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 to use God's word outside of its context means that we're going to be in big trouble and all he is able to do is to resist whatever it is we're trying to use his word for instead of what he sent it to us for, which is to heal us and to deliver us from sin and all sin's effects and religion being the greatest one, okay? So let's get back into this now because we want to point out something very important today. That we're told that we've come to Jesus who's the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of cleansing that speaks better things than that of Abel. We brought it out in the last couple of sessions. You got to hear God through the gospel. Proof, scripturally, all God's words are in righteousness. Okay, Proverbs 8 and 8. Write this down. Listen, if you're just listening and thinking, I don't know about it, write it down. You go look at it yourself. God wants to grab your heart and put you in the place he can guide you and lead you. 
All God's words are in righteousness. Proverbs 8 and 8. Romans 1, 16 and 17 tell us that God's righteousness is revealed in the gospel. In the gospel. Do you see how easy that is? It's so simple and so easy. It's only pride that puffs us up that thinks we need to do something other with that. Amen. So God is speaking through the gospel. He saves through the gospel. Read Romans chapter 1. Paul's writing to an already saved, already spirit-filled church in Rome. Romans chapter 1. Tell them he can't wait to get there and preach the gospel to them. Already saved. Already spirit-filled. Because why? He's not ashamed of the gospel. Why? Because it is the power of God to us who are saved. Hear me already saved. Hallelujah. It is the power of God. It is the power. It's because it allows the Holy Spirit to work in and through our lives. So God speaks. We live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. But listen, let me add another scripture to our list. I hope you wrote them down. Proverbs 8 and 8 says that all God's words are in righteousness. And Romans 1, 16 and 17 says that his righteousness is revealed in the gospel, okay? Proverbs, uh, what is it, chapter, uh, Proverbs chapter uh, 8, verse 20, says that he leads in the paths of righteousness. He's not leading in no other path. And, 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 and it's only in his righteousness that he leads us. And that's not the scripture I wanted to add to that, but it'll come to me here in a minute. But, this is why all the word of God must be in the context of Calvary. This is not, not nothing we're making up. It, it, listen, I told a man after church last night, people will ridicule you. Even though They'll say all you ever do is talk about the cross, but for 18 years we've preached all throughout the whole Bible, but we've preached it in the context of Calvary. Amen. Because if you don't, that's why, that's why the church is in trouble. They're, they're without that object of faith that they started with. And if, and, if, and if we're not pointing people to Calvary using the Word of God, then we're just not hearing the Holy Spirit ourselves. And they don't, they don't have a problem uh, with the word cross. They have a problem with you trying to see everything through the cross. But you have to because the Bible says that the blood of, of, of cleansing, the blood of Jesus is what's speaking better things than that of Abel. And it's what drew us near and made us near to God, Ephesians 13. Hallelujah. Think about that. But verse 25, and it's, this is to saved people. This is not to lost people. This is to saved people. This letter is written to saved people. Remember in Hebrews chapter 5, he's talking about you've been babes too long. You ought to by now be teachers. He's talking, he, this ain't to lost people. Don't, don't get carried off in that deception. <clears throat> There's too much proof. This is to say, this is one letter. And Hebrews 5 alone teaches you've been babes too long. You ought to now have been teachers. You, you're dull of hearing. And, and so, don't don't dare let somebody guide you in the direction that this is to 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 lost Jews who they're trying to get saved. No, no, no. This letter is written to saved Christians, probably Jewish Christians at the time, but it's for Christians all over the world, like me and you. Hallelujah. But watch this now. See that you refuse not him that speaks. He is speaking. He is speaking. But he's speaking through the blood, and folk don't want to hear the message of the cross. You know, they, they don't have a problem. The church can't have a problem with the word cross, but they have a problem when you put only in front of it. The only object of faith you can have is the cross. Proof, Ephesians 4, 5, there's only one faith. Galatians 2, 20 tells us what that, that one faith is. The faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. In that one verse, Galatians 2, 20 points to the one object. Listen, if there's only one faith, it can only have one object. See how simple that is. Yeah, well, we got a whole Bible for faith to come. Yeah, but it's got to be in one object. 
It's the blood that's speaking to get your attention like it did when you got born again. And everything's got to filter through that blood. Everything's got to filter through your faith in that blood or it cannot be applied to your heart. The righteousness of God. Here's the scripture. Thank you, Lord, that, that I wanted to add to that. Write it down. Add it to that list of uh, that, right, that faith only comes through righteousness. That's why Romans 1.18 says, when we hold the truth in unrighteousness, the, the wrath of God, that means the resistance of God is revealed from heaven against all that ungodliness and unrighteousness that is there. Not talking about out there whiskey drinking and drugged, all that stuff. He's talking about people who are religious, people who are holding God's truth in an unrighteous not using nothing to do with the blood that speaks, the cross of Christ, the death of Jesus, the God. They think they got, that's one message, then we've got a lot of them. And oh, the message of the cross must infiltrate every message, my friend. And as long as men keep fighting against that, they will move farther away from that until God has to cause certain things to happen in the lives of those few who do truly fear him because the promise is to those alone who fear him, he will show them his covenant, Psalms 25, 14. So we need to know these things. So write it down, 2 Peter 1 and 1 tells us that this like precious faith, one faith, not two, one faith, this like precious faith that we've obtained, Peter wrote that it comes through righteousness. So if it's if it that's why everything's got to be filtered through Christ and what he did at Calvary, that all the word of God carries no life, no power, no light, no liberty unless it's seen through Christ and what he did to give us light, make us light, give us liberty, the message of liberty. It not just, no, no, no. It's not talking about just because you got born again. It's talking about every moment of your life, you must be striving together for the faith. Not a faith of this, not the prophetic faith, the, the, this faith. There's one faith, Ephesians 4, 5. And we must be all, the church, striving together for the faith of what? The gospel, Philippians 1, 27. It's there. It's what, the, the, the avoidance, avoidance of that, the, the, the rejection of that, the, the misunderstanding of that is why we have all the denominations that we have. It's why, it's why we have all the mess we have in the church that we have, all the hierarchies that, that men think they need to build and, and give ourselves a name and all this mess that's out there. We don't need to be a part of any of that stuff, none of it. We just need to come together and be found striving together for the faith of the gospel. And, and when we are... The message of the cross is preeminent and it's attached to, to, it's infiltrated throughout everything. And I'm not talking about just thrown in at one line at the end of the message. It is, man, it is what we're determined to know, to preach. And to, I don't care if we're teaching on what it means to be an elder or a deacon or a husband or a wife. If you're not bringing the blood of Jesus into it, men are just going to work hard to do what you're telling them the Bible says to do. But the how to do is got to be faith in the one who already did. Hallelujah to the Lamb. It doesn't matter who gets it. It doesn't matter how important they may seem. Listen, the, the, the people with the power and the authority are not men in denominational settings. It's men who carry the message of reconciliation, which is the message of the cross. It is the power. That means it is the authority of God. Hallelujah. To save the lost, and to, and to teach the saved how to live saved and to see the power of God in the church. Hallelujah. See that you refuse not him that speaks. See that you refuse not him that speaks because he's speaking through the blood of Jesus that cleanses. He's speaking through the blood of, he's not speaking through nothing else. See that you refuse not him that speaks. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, how much more shall we not escape? There is no escape. There is no escape 
from what will happen to us if we push that voice that speaks through the blood. If we push that aside, well, I, I, I'm tired of hearing about all this cross stuff. They think they got to say the cross all the time. I, I, no, can't they just talk about prayer? Not without the cross, we can't. Can't we talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Not without the cross, we can't. And God's not going to either. Because without faith in that one object, the gifts, you're not going to get it. You might know everything the Bible says about uh, the gifts of the Spirit. But you ain't going to function in them without faith in the cross, not it, not it be the Holy Spirit. I don't care what they make it look like. My Lord, we can take a drink of Jack Daniels right now and feel something. So it ain't about what you feel in a church. It's about scriptural sound doctrine that you're hearing. Peter even said after he was up on the Mount of Transfiguration and saw Jesus transfigured into his glorious body, Peter said even, even after seeing that, we've got a more sure word of prophecy. We got a more sure word. We don't live by feelings, my friend. And because somebody comes out in a $5,000 suit, six foot six, dark and handsome, blue eyed, prophesying to you, that don't mean nothing because you felt something. You got to have scriptural truth in your heart in righteousness. Hallelujah. In righteousness. Or, or it's not going on. My Lord, how many people have stories of what they say God did and it wasn't God at all? Scriptural truth, sound doctrine, don't run from it, my Lord. And here you're going to hear it. Here you're going to hear it because we're not after your money. We're not after uh, uh, anything. We're after trying to see God's people return to sound doctrine, awaken to righteousness. Hallelujah. I know it's already nine. I'm not worried about it today. We'll go on a little bit. I ain't worried about it. See that you refuse not him that speaks. Now he's speaking through the blood. This is confirmation. This is what you need to know about Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. That in times past in various ways and diverse manners, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, son, we in the last days. In these last days, God is speaking to us by his son. And he is speaking to us by his son, but it's through the blood that he shed. That's what saved you. That's what will keep you. That's what illuminates the entirety of God's word. When we move away from that, we become like the church in Sardis, who is what? Dead. They were dead. And the, 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 the answer the Lord brought to them was to repent and return to the place they could hear and receive. Oh, they had a name that they were alive. It appeared they were hearing and receiving, but Jesus said, you're not. Not for me. You're dead. The church in Galatia fell from grace. Christ could not affect them or profit them in any way. Galatians 5, 1 through 4. The church of Laodicea. Jesus is knocking on the door, wanting back in fellowship with them. Revelation 3.20. All, Peter in Antioch, he moves away from fellowship because he stepped into a boat of hypocrisy. He moved his faith from the sacrifice of Christ. That's why Paul had to tell him when the Bible says, Paul said, when I saw that he walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, read it, Galatians 2, 11 through 14. Paul said, when I saw, that they walked not upright according to the truth of the gospel, he had to tell them. What did he tell them? You need to get full of the Holy Ghost all over again? No, he told them, Peter, we're not justified by works because that's what Peter resorted to. He got up and got away from those Gentiles because he heard those boys from James's church was coming. He played the hypocrite. That's what dissimulation means there in Galatians 2. And Paul had to remind him, oh, oh that's not that's not the right work. That's not the right work. We're not saved. We weren't, that's what he tells him. We weren't justified by our works, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Remember that. It's his faith. There's only one faith. That means there's only one object: Jesus and his cross for the lost and the saved. When we move away from that, doctrine becomes unsound to us. Unsound. 
non-applicable. Because listen, the Lord doesn't just go ahead and do things anyway. To believe that means you also believe that he could save you without believing in the cross of Christ. Well, let me remind you, he can't save you and you, he, can't, he can't mediate to you as the mediator what you need to experience if your faith is not there. Galatians 5, 1 through 4, the church of Galatia could no longer be profited or affected by Christ because they fell from grace. How? By moving their faith from the death, the cross of Christ, to circumcision. Just the wrong, one wrong object of faith, they fell from grace. So when I move my faith from trusting wholeheartedly in my union with Christ in his death to the government of 12 or the purpose-driven life or anything, anything else, walking around the house five times, co confessing that, that, that I'm this and I'm that, confessing this and I'm that, that's not going to remove the issues I'm having. That's not going to bring the grace of God. My faith must be deliberately and consciously. That means I'm aware of what I'm trusting in, my union with Christ in his death, because that's what the Holy Spirit is delivering me to so that I can be made conformable to that which he's delivering me, because only while I'm being made conformable unto that death of Jesus Philippians 3.10, am I going to be able to express the life of Christ? Because the life of Christ only flows out of his death. And that means a tangible, conscious, deliberate, I know about it, trusting in Christ and what he did for me at Calvary, what he did to me at Calvary. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go four more minutes. Uh, we'll just take, we'll just see that you refuse not him that speaks, for if they escape not who refused him that spoke on earth, much more, much more, much more shall not shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speaks from heaven. He's speaking from heaven. And he's speaking through what he did at Calvary. He's not speaking through no other avenue. God's not speaking through no other avenue. All his words are in righteousness. His righteousness is only revealed in the Gospel, that means all his words can only be understood through the gospel. Not because you were saved by the gospel only, but all his words literally looked at through the gospel. Because that's what all his words had been spoken through. The lamb was slain before he ever uttered a word to man. Whether it be the freedom that he had to eat of all the trees in the garden, just don't eat off that one. Or after he sinned and disobeyed God, he came in and gave the promise. And all the prophets, the laws, and the Psalms, Jesus said the scriptures are concerning him, that the volume of the book was written of him. He is the living word of God, my friend. Verse 26, whose voice then shook the earth. You remember the story. We just read it. He just told us about it up earlier in the chapter. And the voice spoke. It shook the mountain. Shook the mountain. I mean, shook the, shook the earth. And, and the people were so terrified. Even Moses himself, we read it. Even verse 21, the, the, the sight and the experience was so terrible. Verse 21 says that Moses said, even I exceedingly fear and quake. The one who's a friend of God, talk to God face to face, even he exceedingly feared and shook. Think about that. He said, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he's promised saying, yet once more I shake not only the earth only, but also heaven. Let me tell you something. The Lord speaks through the sacrifice of his son. You don't believe it, you're off track. The more you do believe it, the more you'll experience of God's words, his righteousness that comes only found through faith, that comes only through righteousness. Second Peter 1 and 1. It only comes, the faith, the measure of faith you received when you were born again, Romans 12, 3, God has dealt to all of us the measure of faith. It came through, Peter said, righteousness and our Savior 
the Lord Jesus Christ. That's 2 Peter 1 and 1. That's not just a one-time avenue that faith had to come. Faith don't come outside of the righteous avenue. It's righteous context, which is the cross of Christ. It does not happen. That's why we can quote the word. We can get all hyped up about the word. And, but it won't be, listen, it won't be anything but flesh coming to pump us up if it's not coming through our faith in the death of Jesus. I'm sorry the church has not known and gotten so far away from it as a whole that when you preach the soundness of the word of God, people throw rocks at you. And even some of the most uh, 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 notable uh eloquent speakers and, and who can quote scripture and say so many things about the word, they don't like this focus of Calvary because the flesh doesn't like to die. I got news for you. If you're Christian, you already dead. You already dead. It's better to be dead to sin than dead in sin, though. Hallelujah. Watch now. Oh, it's already. Let's, let's quit here today and let's get back in this. Uh, uh, Monday morning, where we'll start right here in verse 26 about the voice of God that shook the earth. But now he's not just shaking the earth, he's shaking the earth and the heavens. Because what Christ did at Calvary now being fulfilled, man, that's the earth and the heaven shaker right there. I sure do love you guys that gather around God's word with me every Monday and Thursday. I, I, I'm just so thankful for the encouragement that I get from you online, the messages that I receive, the, the you letting me know that you're praying for us, and all of those of you who give uh, to the ministry, we are so thankful for every penny that comes into this ministry to help us do not only what we're doing, but how much we're able to do it, and uh, and how far God desires to reach through this ministry. He, he does that through your help. And, and, and your faithfulness and every time somebody is praying for us, every time somebody donates to the Lord, gives to the Lord through this ministry, it just shows me that they are seeing themselves how faithful their God is. Because any act of faithfulness on our part is really Him being faithful to us, in us, and through us. God bless you. I love you. Don't forget to tune in in the morning at 9 a.m. Central Time for Cross Time with Pastor Curtis as we'll dig back in the great words of life found in 1 Peter chapter 2. God bless you. Love you. I'll see you then. Until then, stay determined to know absolutely nothing but Christ and Him crucified. We'll see you then. Bye.